Luke chapter 10, 25 through 37. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he said, Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, giving them to an innkeeper, and he said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers, he said? The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The good Samaritan was a neighbor who stopped and helped a man that no one else would help, not even a priest. Everybody needs a good Samaritan at one point or another especially teens, as they navigate difficult times in their lives. I often wonder who I would be. Would I act as the priest, the Levite, or the Good Samaritan? Who would you be? My sister grew up with a girl that has a God-given talent in art. In the eighth grade and the beginning of ninth grade, she was at a healthy weight. At the end of ninth grade, my sister and her group of friends had a feeling something was wrong. Their dear friend was becoming skinnier and skinnier. In the beginning of 10th grade, she was below 100 pounds. Two of her friends didn't want to say anything because they were afraid that they would offend their friend. But my sister disagreed with them. She couldn't just sit by and watch this happen to her friend. She was worried sick. Her friend was not eating and my sister wanted to find help for her. Her friend talked to her parents about her lack of eating. She went to the doctor where she was diagnosed as anorexic. She was then sent to Colorado for treatment. She was in Colorado for three months. And while she was gone, my sister sent her letters and sketches that she felt would lift her friend's spirit. My sister's friend is now back at home and is at a healthy weight. She is thankful for my sister and has told her numerous times how much she appreciates her. I believe my sister is a good example of a good Samaritan. And I am proud that she had the courage to stand up and talk to her friend when no one else did. No one else didn't even want to get involved. My sister helped her friend confront her illness and gave her friend the strength and conviction she desperately needed to overcome. My sister gives me inspiration and the courage to act in the same way, and I am thankful for my sister every day. Another time I have witnessed the presence of a good Samaritan was when my neighbor told me her story. Her parents had an ugly divorce when she turned 15. Her dad moved out and her mom had to deal with all the legal responsibilities. My neighbor felt her mom was so involved and devastated with the divorce that she could not help her daughter cope with the changes. Her dad became extremely busy with his new girlfriend and didn't have any time to spend with his daughter. Needless to say, my neighbor felt alone and betrayed. My neighbor sought guidance through a friend's mom. She moved out of her mom's house and moved in with her friend. There, she felt loved and validated. The friend's mom became her good Samaritan. Not only when she let her move in, but when she encouraged her to sit down and have a long talk with her parents. During these conversations, my neighbor's parents acknowledged her feelings and began helping her through the divorce. In Luke chapter 10, <laughs> verses 25 through 37, a man was stripped down, beaten, and left on the side of the road half dead. Oftentimes, we feel as the man did. We feel abandoned and useless. We feel that other people just pass us by, not even caring one bit. In these times, we need a neighbor, a good Samaritan. Sometimes teens are the ones that need a, a neighbor the most. In the two stories I told you, Teen girls found out who their neighbor was in their time of need, just like the man that was stripped, beaten, and left on the side of the road half dead. It can be uncomfortable or even un inconvenient to be a good Samaritan. At times, it may be easier to act like the priest or the <clears throat> Levite and just pa pass by pretending like we didn't even notice. Would you be willing to become someone's good Samaritan? Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the good Samaritans that come into our lives every day. 
Help us to find the people who need us as their Good Samaritan. And help us become the miracle for them that you would have us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.